Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click, and this is a companion video to our What's New summary for the Click Data Analytics release, April 2020. It is about 20 minutes and covers more of the demonstrable features and capabilities in greater detail. Let's get started. The first one being improvements to the global navigation. If you remember in the February 2019 release, we introduced a single page application flow basically this tabbed interface across the top, which allows you to jump from data preparation to analysis to data storytelling without having to open up additional tabs uh, within the browser. Now we've made some improvements on this where now we have reduced the amount of content that is available in the navigation and context menus and added the appropriate subject matter to these application flow views. So for example, under prepare data manager, we can go directly into the data manager, the data load editor, or the data model viewer. Under analyze sheet, if we weren't in a sheet, we can navigate directly to the sheet or jump directly to visual insights. And then we also can jump directly to uh, storytelling. So that is a small improvement that will help with uh, application creation and workflow. Okay, the next item I want to show you is our new org chart. So if we navigate to custom objects and you can see underneath the click visualization bundle, we have a new item called org chart. And this is a popular item based on customer requests. This is a tailor made chart for showing cards in a hierarchy, such as a company roster. So in this example here, I already have some data that is specific to this. So I have uh, the child, which is unique ID. And then I have the parent, which is manager ID and you can see the org chart has been created. So if I go into analysis mode, I can collapse the parent and then also expand the children under each of the particular hierarchies. In addition to expanding these particular hierarchies, you can also select the individual elements and apply them to your selections. So the next item I'd like to demonstrate is our shared bookmarks. So in order to improve collaboration, we've added a way to share bookmarks in published apps, basically allowing the user to copy a link to that community bookmark, and then they could share that in other channels like email, Slack, and other chat interfaces. So in order to do that, I'm going to turn on another user within another browser session. And you can see here we are in uh, a ClickSense session with user one, and I'm in a sales stream and we have an app that's already been published, Dashboard 2019 Sales. So let's pretend we're going to analyze some data, open up the sheet, and basically we're just going to perform some selections. Let's just choose a couple of category names. And then I might want to revisit this, so I'm going to create a bookmark. And we'll just call this bookmark1234 and click Create. So now we have our bookmark. So this is my bookmark for user one. But at the same time, I can right click and select publish. When I click publish, that'll make it available to others who have access to the same app in the same stream. Now you won't be able to share this link with others unless the bookmark is published. So here I'm going to publish this. And now it is available. Now if I right click and select copy link, you can see this dialog that comes up and I can click open a new tab. And basically it'll bring me to that sheet with those particular selections. But then once again, this is my account as user one. So let's switch over to the uh, M Tarallo user ID on the other session. Let's go back to our hub, go into the sales stream. We'll go into the same app that I have access to very similar to user one. Now, if I go to bookmarks, you can see we have a section here called community bookmarks. So basically now I'm able to use user one's bookmark. I can click that and it brings me right into that selection state. And then at the same time, I can go to this bookmark here, right click, copy the link as well, and use that in another channel, put it in an email, put it in a chat interface. Okay, so the next one I want to show you is the addition of a new modifier called relative. And as you see with each release, we've been adding these additional advanced calculations to the modifier menu within our measures. 
So simply speaking, relative numbers basically provides a user with a quick way to create, share, and calculate the percentage of a total from a particular measure. And it's available in bar, combo, line, and table charts. So in this case here, when we've changed it to relative numbers, what we can do is turn on number formatting, change it to a percentage, and then each one of these bars, if you uh, accumulated the total, would add up to 100%. Now to make it a little bit easier to see, let's just change our year month to just simply year. And you can see here we have 21%, 36%, 38%, and 5%. We add those all up and it comes out to 100%. Okay, just to show you how it's done, fairly simple. There's our bar chart for the dimension. I'm just going to add our year month. I'll add sales for the measure. Okay. Now by default, we have our sum of sales. Let's go into sorting, change our sort order, go back to the measure. Now, if you want to add another bar, what you can do, we've added this as a new feature in a previous release. Just right click on your measure, select duplicate. And then here we can call this one relative. Change it to number, change the formatting, and then in the modifier, select relative. Now we're using a regular bar chart here, so it's not going to show both of those scales unless we used a combo. So at this point, you can just right click and then delete the other measure and now you have your relative. If you wanted to include both measures, what we can do is let's just click undo. Now we'll go to our combo chart, convert to combo chart, and then now we can select the relative to uh, be a bar, and then we can choose the other representation as a line, and then change the axis to a secondary axis. Okay, so now we have our relatives, which are now showing on the left axis, and we have our sales in blue showing on the right axis. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is sheet triggers, basically allowing an app to have a sheet that has defined actions, so when you open up the sheet, the actions take place. So in this case here, we just applied a simple one that took the title from a variable, and set a bookmark to Argentina. So if we go into edit mode and making sure the sheet is active, you'll notice there's a new section on the right called actions. And then here you can apply various actions, applying bookmarks, moving through selections, clearing selections, selecting excluded values, locking specific fields, setting variables, etc. So let's start over and I'll just do this for you live so you can see it, how it works. Clear my selections. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we want to apply the bookmark. And the bookmark is already defined in the app. Now that's done. Let's add another one. This one will set a variable. And I happen to have a variable here called vname. And the value for that will be, hey, you guys. And then finally, We'll add one more action and we'll do a toggle of a field selection for the field country and the value Belgium. Okay, so we set three particular actions to happen when the sheet opens. Close it down, go back in. Now you'll see the name of the sheet it says garbage after expression because we don't have the variable set at that point. So when I click this, hey, you guys get set. The bookmark for Argentina gets applied, and then the toggle of the field selection for Belgium also gets applied. So that is sheet triggers. So I know how you guys love pivot tables, and you're always making recommendations on how we can improve it, and we have listened. One of the improvements we have made is the ability to actually save the layout in a bookmark. So let me change the structure of this to basically add our months. Let's put our categories on top. And maybe let's just limit our selection to babyware. So now in this case here, we must go into the edit mode 
And then when we select the particular sheet, we click apply. So if you are a developer and you want to create the bookmark while you're editing it, you would do that. Create a new bookmark. And we'll call it pivot four and click create and confirm. So let's go to the app overview, go to bookmarks. I select pivot four and now you can see it kept my structure with the selection as well as the layout. Now, if this is on a published app, same thing applies, but you don't have to go into edit mode and apply those changes. You just basically go into your selections, make your changes. So here we're going to swap year. And maybe this time we'll choose bath clothes. And now I'm going to create my bookmark. Okay, bookmark is created. Now in the published app, you can see now the selections and the layout are maintained. One other improvement we've made to the pivot tables is the ability to sort by the first measure in the pivot. So normally pivots are sorted by dimensions, but this option allows for sorting based on the first measure and precedes all other sorting, but it does have some requirements. Um, you must use only dimensions in the rows. So here you can see year is in the column. So we'll remove that. And then when we go into the uh, sorting option, you can see there's a sort by first measure. We turn that on and you can see the sorting has occurred. Optionally, you can go into the particular dimension and you can turn on totals as well. Okay, so now we have our sorting by first measure. We have made a few improvements to the table object. The first one being the ability to freeze the first column. And you can also enable this on a touchscreen device. So those devices that have restricted viewing on the number of columns that you can see, you have the option to at least maintain some additional information in the first column as you scroll right and left horizontally to see the other columns within the table. Another improvement is the ability to add a URL or hyperlink directly within the table chart. So in the past, we would have to create a master item, for example, to represent the link like you see here, or you would have to have that particular link, let's say, coming out of a column within your data structure. Well, now what you can do is directly within the column is you can turn on the representation to link like you have in the past, but now you have the ability to add a URL. And in this case here, I have the URL uh, set up. I'm just going to now add the um, concatenation and we'll just use the category name. Click apply. Now we have babyware and now you can see the link is created. And if I just click it, it fills in the search box with what we were looking for. Okay, and now I can actually now search this pretty easily and just bring up the particular URL that I'm interested in. We added a layout behavior improvement to the KPI object. So the first one by default is always known as responsive. And this is where the text inside the KPI is always visible. However, in some cases, regardless of the size of the KPI box, if they were the same, the height of the text was not always the same. So we introduced a fluid behavior. And what this does is only looks at the box size and not the text. So the text will overflow if it does not fit within the box. And then the third option is fixed. Basically, the text size will always be the same. So just to demonstrate, this one is set to responsive. This one is set to fixed and this one is set to responsive, which we're going to turn on to fluid. And you can see that now the box is fairly large and it has large numbers in it and it overflows. We can turn it to medium and you can see once again, it fits the size of the particular box. Now, if we go to fixed, the text is still the same. Now responsive, as we've mentioned, is very similar to fluid, however, it is looking at the text size within the box versus the box itself. 
So in this case here, if I resize, you can see it's resizing accordingly. In this case here, this is only going to overflow at a certain point based off of the font size. Okay, so those are some improvements within the KPI objects layout behavior. Now, something I'd like to present for ClickSense Enterprise for Windows users, there is a particular tool called the App Management Console, which was designed as a self-service application for those who have access to the Management Console, but need a little bit easier approach to managing apps. So we are going to be including that inside the tools directory of the installation. Now this is my local installation here and you can see inside the path we have a tools folder and then there is a folder called AMC. And this is very simply added to the QMC through our content libraries. So here I'm just going to create a new content library, call it AMC. Now for the security rule I'm basically just going to give everybody access to it and then we're going to upload the contents. I'm going to browse to that location and you can see I'm already here so I'm just going to select all of the particular files and click upload. So now these are available and you can see here's the URL that I would access. In this case here it's going to be the home.html and then from here I'm just going to paste that in like this and there is the app management console. Okay, so here you can see access to your streams, you have ways of managing your tasks, and then you can select a particular app, in this case here, edit, change owner, delete, move, import, export, duplicate, reload, and create a reload task. Basically gives you the same capabilities available in the QMC, but from an easy to use self-service app. Uh, we are working on integrating this into the ClickSense Enterprise for Windows Hub as well. Uh, in this release, it's going to be a add-on that you can access through the URL. Okay, so the last thing I'd like to demonstrate to you is how I can take a ClickView document from an on-premise ClickView server and distribute it to a cloud-based deployment for ClickSense. Now to get started, I have a ClickSense Enterprise cloud-based environment, april.us.clickcloud.com. And then I also have my ClickView environment where I am in the Management Console. Under the Setup tab, I'm just going to set up a new deployment. And I do that simply by putting in my ClickSense Enterprise URL and then click Apply. So now we can go into that environment. And let's generate the configuration. And this will give us what's called a Barra token, which I'll copy to Clipboard. And then we go to our ClickSense environment and go to our administration pages. In this case here, we're in our management console. Select my identity provider, create a new one. This one's going to be multi-cloud. Provider click, give it a description. Paste in the Vero token and click create. Now the two machines can talk to each other. Let's go back to ClickView Management Console and let's get a document that we're going to distribute to my ClickSense Hub. We'll use the Movies Database distribution. Now, this particular task will be enabled. We can perform a reload, reduce, distribute. I'm not really going to go through all these tabs. We're just going to focus on the Distribute tab. We're going to distribute this document. We're going to choose our April ClickSense Cloud Deployment and then click Apply. Okay, now once that's been set up, we can go to our status and we can look at our tasks. There's our Movies Database distribution. And we can kick off this task. You can see it's now running. And now it's in a waiting state. Let's move over to our ClickSense environment. Go to the hub. Go to explore. And there's our movies database. Now we can click the movies database. 
and we could use this just like it was deployed on a ClickView server, but now it's on my cloud-based deployment of ClickSense. Now I can go back to my hub and I could also manage this just like any other app. So in this particular case here, we can go to the administration console. We can go to apps. And then here we can assign a space and so forth. I don't have any spaces set up, but just to give you an example of how you can manage this piece of content, just like any other content created in the ClickSense Hub. Okay, guys, that's all I have. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care and be sure to visit the Click community where you can browse many helpful resources on this latest release as well as join in on the conversation with myself and others.